Good day and welcome back to the Asperger's Growth YouTube channel with your host, as always, Mr. Thomas Henley. Today we are going to go into a short, <laughs> short autism video on autism and grief. As I said in one of my update videos before, this series of videos, this type of videos, are going to be loosely based on my Instagram posts. If you want to go check out the actual posts that I make, you can follow me on Instagram, at Asperger's Growth, same as my YouTube channel, very easy to find. Anyway, let's get into autism and grief. Really, the, um, the ignition for this video has come from my granddad's anniversary, which was last week, last weekend. You know, it's it's always a really, really difficult time because being autistic, being alexithymic, it's it's very hard to kind of categorize the emotions that I'm feeling. It's it's very hard to, to sort of deal with the the negative effects of, you know, coming to the yearly realization that my granddad is no longer with me. I was thinking a little bit about the ways in which it may be different. Obviously the grieving process it's a tough time for anybody. It's it's a horrible experience. It's something that many, that many or most human beings have to experience at some point in their life. And it's a very natural thing. I'm gonna go through sort of a list of different of different things that make make approaching and, and processing and dealing with grief particularly difficult as an autistic person. I'm gonna be looking at the different traits. Uh, specifically we go for number one specifically the first one is alexithymia it can make it very diff difficult to i guess notice or categorize those those background emotions we, we did it a little bit different this this year we decided to go out and do something um you know do something fun do something as a family um one of the things you know that really helps me in the grieving process is taking time to think about it. It's kind of like, you know, when you're obsessed with something, when you when you're thinking about something a lot and it's really getting to you. Um it the the, the best way to approach that usually is to designate an amount of time during the day or a specific time of the day where you can think about it. And then maybe for an hour you could write or you can make art or you could just jot down your thoughts or, or just think about a certain thing that's that's upsetting you and leave it at that once that's over until you approach it on the next day that's the kind of that's kind of the way that i approach this because um being the person that i am i'm very sentimental i'm very emotional and you know i like to give my emotions and my thoughts to my granddad you know he's not here but it it helps me to kind of process how I'm feeling about it. Pay, pay attention to some of the, the really great and positive memories that I've had with him. You know, obviously, when, when he passed away, there was a lot of sadness, a lot of emotional pain. I hadn't really experienced that deep sadness in a long time. It's, you know, I, I'm severely depressed. So, and depression is a lot different to being sad. There's, there's no rhyme or reason for it in a lot of cases for me. It's just there and it just sort of infests my life in different ways. Being sad, it's, there's a reason for it. It's cathartic. It's, it's a good, it's, it's, it's a healthy emotional reaction to something that is negative. So I like to think about the way that I appro approach grieving as take, you know, taking a, a period of time to, to think and feel. When I think and when I feel, my emotions are going to rise. I'm going to be able to notice that I'm sad, notice the, the love that I have for my granddad, notice all of those those emotions that are inside of me because I'm thinking about it. I'm, in a, in a sense, giving it space to grow as much as it needs to, you know. It's not, not, not the most positive thing to feel, but it's important to feel that emotion and to understand it and to understand how you feel about it. Where, where it comes an issue for me is if I don't, approach it in my own time if I don't actively seek out the thinking and the emotions. It tends to just exist in the background 
and affects affects me in ways that I can't notice. You know, there's background emotions. It's like being on a steady dose of a medication all the time. Like every hour, you're taking taking a med and small doses. And, in, and for me, it's like when you take your medicine at the end of the day. It's like to sleep or to, or you you antidepressants. It's the specific time of the day where I get all of the dose out of the way. I hope that makes it easier to to sort of understand my my approach to it. I I feel feel the weight of every memory that I have, and I allow myself to feel the negative feelings and feel the positive feelings. It's just, in my experience, a lot more productive for me and a lot more meaningful to me when I set some time aside. So number two, we're going to number two. We're moving moving quickly. Change can leave you unsure. Of how to move forward. Yeah. When someone passes away, they leave a hole in your life. Now, depending on how much interaction you've had with them, depending on how deep the connection is, how often you talk, how many things you do with them on a regular basis, maybe they're a part of a hobby or, you know, just, just there in the background in your house or they're ready ready to ready to see you every week after a hard week and you can talk to them and chat to them you know that that makes up a part of your routine to some degree and usually people make up a very important role in emotional and social needs when when someone is removed from your life there's a lot of anxiety and and dysfunction because there's there's so much that you've got those emotions of grief and all all of that stuff to process, but you also have, you know, this hole that that in your routine you you may feel like you're in deep water. You don't know where to go or how to adjust things and where to get your emotional social needs that this person has has left. You know, left a hole in that need. You know, it can impact you quite a lot. And it's it's important to to recognise the part the the roles that this person played in your life, and also try and think of of ways to to get your needs met, the needs that that they met before and can't now. And obviously, this this it takes time, um, but it's it is important, and it will it'll make you feel a lot more comfortable and be able to process the emotions a lot easier once you're in a stable place. So we're going on to the very last one. And it is the difficulties with the social aspect of grieving. Yeah. Those situations where you're at a funeral or you're around people who um, knew this person either quite closely or loosely or, you know, this this sort of feels to be some kind of expectation to talk about it sometimes. And at the same time, if someone else is struggling due to their passing, you may feel like there's a lot of stress and a lot of anxiety on you to try and fix it, try and fix the whole. This this whole this whole approaching the social aspects of it can be very difficult for us because if we haven't learned how to behave in this circumstance, either through knowledge or experience, it's going to be a lot harder for us because we 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 lack the inherent so the the the, the the skills that we're born with, the inherent skills of socialising and cognitive empathy and, you know, understanding the social nuances and reading the room, etc. And so, you know, <laughs> it can make social events very either very stressful, um, you know, or you're always worrying about it all the time. Or on the other hand, it, it, you could say something that is inappropriate to the situation or you're not reading the room right. You know, just to give myself again as an example, I am a very emotional person. <laughs> I'm very sensitive and supportive to my loved ones. Um, but you know, when you when you add the grief, when you add the dissociations into thought, the frequent sort of thinking about it, the the low mental health that comes with, with being sad and difficulty with cognitive empathy. And sometimes you don't read the room right and you get it wrong. You say something and it's and it upsets people. And it could be very small things like the tone of your voice or your body language or your facial expressions or um, your level of interactivity or 
you know, there's there's a whole host of different reasons to why it can, um, you know, people can read you differently. And when the other people are struggling, like like yourself, um, can make them a, a little bit less tolerant to to that kind of stuff. But it has it has happened, and it's it's often. It's often very, very nervy because you're always thinking, like, I want to do the best for this person and their family, and you, you, you kind of, you kind of on a bit of a limb because you, you really want to help, but at the same time, you don't want to say the wrong thing. It's, it's more likely that we're going to say the wrong thing because of our inherent lower social skills and cognitive empathy and the likes of I'm here. So there's, a, there's a lot of things in that, and I, I you know, I, I'd, I'd love to hear how. If you have any positive ways of dealing with grief, I would definitely fully, fully um, appreciate that. How do how do you do how do you deal with your grief? And is there any things that you can share with others to to help them in this time? I'd really love to hear that. So that does our little short video. It's actually short <laughs> for the first time with me over promising a short video. Um, so I hope this this helps, and I hope you have a lovely day. And uh, don't hesitate to get in contact. Follow the social media's website, thomashenley.co.uk, for modelling, for public speaking, for all that lovely jazz. And, of course, the 40 Audi podcast, which will be coming very soon. <laughs> We've said it for a while, but it is. I've got them recorded um, for season two. Uh, I've got some really cool guests coming on, so definitely try and subscribe to that, Spotify, Apple Podcasts. And, um, yeah, have a lovely day. Keep yourself hydrated. I know us autos tend to, tend to not get our liquids in. <laughs> I'm the same if you haven't eaten today. Try and get some food in you. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm probably going to go to the gym later, have a nice shower, have some, uh, have some dinner and uh, try and chill out. It's been a, been a hard week last week and um, yeah. See you later, folks. Oh, that's, that's a bit callous. A bit blunt. Um, thank you for watching once again, and I'll see you in another episode on the Asperger's Growth Channel. See you later. <laughs>